Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Your number one stop for stellar reviews of volumes, arcs or stories that us or yourselves choose. You can find us live every Wednesday on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch and the replay on all podcast networks. Take a seat, get yourselves and your opinions ready as it's time to join the herd. But first, please put your hands together for your hosts, Shane, Phil and Scott as they kick off this week's discussion. Ahoy hoy and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Each week we pick a book, story, trade, arc, event, anything we want. And we come back a week later and talk about it. And this week is my pick. <laughs> this week is my pick. And I have picked Young Justice from DC Comics from 1998. Volume 1 called A League of Their Own. And that was written by Peter David. The one and only Peter David. Art by Todd Newark. And ink by Larry Strucker. Colours by Jason Wright. So yes, that's my pick. And I, as always, am joined by two of the most amazing co-hosts who love me so much they would never talk bad about my comics. (laughs) (laughs) Scott from Scott Shelf. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Thanks for coming. And Phil from Phil's Nerdiverse. Hello, and I am definitely going to talk bad about this comic this week. Sorry, Shane. Don't forget his pronunciation on uh, Todd Noak's name. (laughs) (laughs) judging by your name i assumed you're not a fan of this phil um for podcast listeners phil's chosen the name i'd rather watch love and thunder again uh which is a big dig to this comic book (laughs) he just loved love and thunder (laughs) maybe we'll see we'll find out over the next hour um before we get into it, let's have a look and see who's joining us this week. We have uh, Funky Gibbons is in. Um, well, no, he's not. He says, sorry, I won't be able to watch along tonight. Have a great show, guys. Can't wait to catch the rewind. Hope you enjoy the rewind and hope you're going to be a little fair on my choice than Phil is probably going to be. <laughs> we also have Highland G. Sup, party people. Hi, Highland G. Thanks for joining. We have Wednesday spoilers. Yo, hello. Sonic's Comics. Martin's in. Evening all. This week in Metropolis. Even dudes, James here. Hi, James. Thanks for dropping in. Um, We also have Connie. Oh, Connie. Hello. Hi, Connie. She says, hi, fellas. (laughs) And we have Branded One Arc. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. I appreciate it. I hope you've all read along. If you have, don't forget scores later on if you have read. Um, But we need a synopsis before we jump into it. And I have written one down. So the synopsis for this goes like this. Uh, A League of Their Own sees the formation of the pre-adult superhero team Young Justice, founded by Tim Drake's Robin, Connor Kent's Superboy, and Bar Allen's Impulse as they try to navigate life as a teen and a superhero. Jumping into action at a moment's notice, their hearts are in the right place, but not always their heads. Facing enemies from Despero to Mitzel Pitalik to some new villains like the Mighty Endowed, a very top-heavy villainess. (laughs) to harm a deadly new threat that wants to practice killing on the kids before he moves on to the adults. This team will have to prove themselves not only to the villains, but to their heroes as well. So that's the synopsis for Young Justice, a league of their own. Um, Before we jump to Phil, because I I do want to know what Phil has to say, let's hope. Scott, are you going to be a little kinder on this book? I'll try my best. I mean, I've got my, obviously I've got my neutral head on. Uh, my unbiased head on and I tried my best to take this as it was and uh, I tried my best as well to explain you know the gist of this as simply as I can and for me it was um, a monster of the week kind of story um, where we had a new villain or a new situation every single time it wasn't like you know the the bad guy or the bad situation wasn't the arc the arc in this story was the group forming and getting to know each other and then um, something about this sentient bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the bit that threw me off the whole time. I was like, what the hell is this bike doing? But, um, you know, as as a teenage, you know, style book, you know, with, that's how the characters are. It was just, it was a bit of fun. The language was very 90s. And, but I, we can't put, put, 
point down because of how the language was, because it was relevant and it was fine in the 90s. So I hope, Philip, you don't do that. Um, yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was just it was just a decent bit of fun. Um, and it was, you know, it was all right. Oh, I'll take that. Phil, <laughs> what were your initial thoughts when you finished <clears throat> reading this? I'm trying to be um, as uh, nice as I can, I suppose. I didn't. I didn't hate the book. I think that's something. Um, I have. I mean, I've taken number twos that are more interesting than this book. Um, it's just like this. I just didn't get bored of it at all. I just. I don't. I don't get it. I. Uh, I. I have this thing, and, and and Scott mentioned being unbiased. I am slightly biased towards like superhero, like younger versions of the same superheroes. I just don't like it. I don't know why. I've no real kind of need for it, really. I just think, just create a new hero that happens to be a younger thing, not like a different version of Superman or a different version of The Flash. Um, as for the language, this was 1998. I was 12. I don't think I spoke like this. And if I did, I would go back in time and hit myself a slap <laughs> because it's just a bit daft. But um, I'm glad this book exists. And I'm glad that some people like it. And yeah, have at it. The art was nice. Wow. That's, that's as diplomatic as I can be. The art, the art was nice. And speaking the of the language, um, speaking of the language, I did uh, genuinely use the word cool spelt K-E-W-L <laughs> when I was on MSN with all of my friends. <laughs> because that's how you talk in the night. That's how cool I was. I did. Speaking of the language, though, I did like in one part of the book where it did say "insert relevant slang word here" when yeah. um, he, Superboy was swearing. Um, I did think that was a nice little touch. But I can understand um, this isn't a book, I suppose, for people that read books in this day and age. I don't think many of them would read a book from pre two thousand, um, mm. maybe even like pre twenty ten, because books back then completely different like the 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 morals of the stories were completely different the messaging was completely different you know they they were just there to entertain that it was there to be fun and it was there to be entertaining for as long as you were reading that issue it wasn't meant to preach at you it wasn't meant to you know have you leave the book going hmm maybe i could be a better person after mm -hmm. reading this it was just to entertain you for 20 minutes just while you read the book here. Yeah. yeah, there there was a bit of preaching in this, the part where they wouldn't light the campfire, because Robin said it pollutes the air, yeah. or whatever. So there was a slight went out like anyway forest fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then peer yeah. pressure got to him, and he went out and did it anyway. <laughs> so, Shane, what um, did you think? What did I think? Yeah. I I love this book. I mean, this this was one of the first series I completed after reading just one volume. I read the first volume and I went back and completed the entire 55 issue run. I then got all the tie-ins, everything to go with it. I just, I love everything about this book from the characters to the art. And Peter David is one of my all time favorite writers. And I think he just nails like the younger, more fun generation of heroes. I mean, like this is my, this is my carry copy here. Oh, your carry copy. We've got another this one, is, Phil. Is, <laughs> this another is another carry this is, copy. I take this if I want to read it anytime. I'll take this one with me. Like my main copy is up in my boxes, and then I have the individual issues as well. But this is my reading slash carry copy because it is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. So just, is I it more love... is it more nostalgic for you then? Is is that what this is? Is this nostalgia, or um... it's nostalgia for a better time in comic books where they did just want to entertain you while you right. read them you know like they just it just it's got its goal is to entertain it's to make you laugh it's to give you a yeah. little bit of action and to give you some character development that's its goal and i think it did pretty well i think it created the team well yeah. it told you who each character was introduced some ladies onto the team got to meet their parents it's it's hard i think you know reading this now how many years ahead are we now uh 24 24 years ahead jeez so <laughs> so how do we review this? I mean, do we review this with the head on being like, you know, okay, this was nine, this was a nineties book, and based on what you said, they were written in that way, like this is how they were. But yeah, I mean, you can't find a book like this now. 
like coming out weekly as a trade, whatever. You can't. No. And so if people have like Connie now, she's 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 only been reading for a few years, same as me. So how how are we gonna feel when we're reading something like this? Is like, oh this isn't this isn't what comics should be like. But then you and Pete in the com uh, comments and I think Mark Aldroyd as well, maybe, like they're gonna be like, This is great. Like this is what comics should be like. And so yeah. How the hell do we review this? I think you have to review it how you want to review, how you see fit. Because, like I say, you are a new reader. You haven't read anything. I mean, apart from Flash, you have, you've read older Flash books, but you yeah. haven't read much of the DC Universe pre-Flashpoint. So for you, mm. you know, you have to review it as is. I mean, I suppose Phil as well. Like, how far back have you gone, Phil? You know, well, I've, re I've read a lot of stuff in the 90s, but, uh, I mean, we have read some stuff in the 90s here. I always mm -hmm. remember the the... the the Ghost Rider story, the Spirit of Vengeance, and like, but it just seemed so much cooler. The art was cool, and they were smoking cigarettes and stuff. Like, it seemed more adult orientated almost. Where this, like, don't get me wrong, in 1998, I was 12. I was a 12 year old reading this. I mean, I liked it. I was six. Thanks very much. <laughs> but I, I, I might have enjoyed it as a 12 year old, but I can't get away from the fact that I'm reading it as a 36 year old for the first time. So I have to judge it on that. And there's That's something absolutely. I. There's something I quite dislike about older writers almost like writing things and what they think young people or how, how they think young people would speak. I, felt I struggle with that. It's not just I this book. There, there, are, there are many books that maybe are catered for young audiences, even now, that, that the, it's the older people writing a book of how they think young people should or do speak, and it doesn't yeah. work, you know. But I will say Peter David does like he does the entire run and he is he does improve i mean this is the first seven issues he's written for the characters so he was yeah. given three mm -hmm. teenagers and he's told here write for these and he's a middle-aged man you know but he does i will tell you by the end of this run you fall in love with every single one of these characters and the final issue does break your heart it really does um let me just catch up on some comments because i think what you said about connie mentioning her reading practices i feel like i really struggle to read comics that came out pre-2010 yeah so that she read 10 percent of this and she wasn't super into it why are their legs all so long and connor's facial expressions kept throwing me right off i didn't oh, really? think that their legs were overly long um we also have um the comic book report in uh late again hey, obviously <laughs> thanks for joining <laughs> Triple G's also here. Evening. Sorry, I'm like, never apologize for being late, Pete. Thank don't you for popping in. <laughs> and um, Mark Oldroyd is also in. So he's had more interest in number twos. <laughs> Have they been published? So yeah, I think, I think he's referring to your yeah. comment. Um, I will just say, sorry, frog in my throat. Highland G comments. He says, um, when he first read this, he had never read any of these characters before other than much older Tim. So for Highland G to like the book after not read not really reading any of the characters. I think that's how many people jumped into this because um, Impulse, Robin, and Superboy all have their own titles as this is going on. So if you were reading one of those, maybe you would follow your character into this and then again follow the other characters out. Mm. So it's a good tie-in. Mm. Yes, I think um, I I'm disappointed. Obviously that. But I can completely understand because of your reading timelines, if you want. You know, I can understand. Yeah. Someone who read in the 90s and the noughties, you know, the early noughties, this is what we wanted. This is how our comic books were. Like, I was getting pretty much every DC book at the time. And they were yeah. all just designed to entertain you. There was no preaching in there. You know, they had a story. They had a moral. You learned a lesson. And then, you know, it, that's, it never felt preachy. And I, I just appreciate that in my comic books. But yes. Do you know the way they're always talking about comic books? Um, maybe not surviving, you know, what, what's the future hold for comic books? And they've done, it, they've done it for years and years and years. They think comic books are going to collapse. No one's going to buy them. If this if this is what came out in the late 90s, I need to look back and see how did comics survive? If they're putting out this kind of stuff, how did it survive really? Because I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised if this was what DC was putting out to get by. Well, do you see DC was putting out multiple titles that weren't just Batman back then, you see. Oh, now, nice. every bloody Wednesday, there's 12 Batman books on the shelf <laughs> and then three others. Back the then, you have, they only sell because they're Batman. They don't sell because they're good. 
you're going for quality over quantity. And we didn't get variant covers back then either. It was one cover per book, and that was it. No second, like very rarely did you get a second print. So mm. you went out and you bought the comic, and they got the price of one comic for that issue, and it did well enough to get fifth. How many titles nowadays get fifty-five issues with just one cover per issue? You know, that's fair. There's, there aren't many, of course. Um, no, and so fair. you're saying you you don't know how these survived yet all the comics from the 90s lasted much longer than comics today that are just constantly getting rebooted and restarted that's how they survived they were good <laughs> I, I would assume though in ranking the dc comics we're going to have batman and superman and obviously they took the main guys up and this is probably ranking somewhere in like the top 30 books maybe there's probably a lot of other books ahead of it that would be would be more sought after than, than this i would imagine but maybe but i mean it, it was well well received enough for them to make a tv show um what 20 years later you know yeah, so so it was still on people's <laughs> minds for them to then go do you remember that comic book from the 90s let's make a tv show about it <laughs> so you know mm. these things last people like mm. them people love them they and i i'm one of them i absolutely adore this and uh, scoring it's going to be quite hard because I know what's to come. So I am just scoring it on this one trade. Right. So I have Good. had to really think about my score because I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, because that doesn't happen till later on. And I can't right. tell them about this. Yeah. And, I mean, there's so much I can, I can spoil things because I assume you're not going to read on. So there's. I'm definitely not going to read on. Like, <laughs> Wait, well, what about what we should what we should also consider the viewers? Yes, uh, no spoilers for a 24-year-old <laughs> comic book series, <laughs> unless you've read on already. <laughs> well, I would yes. be surprised, because like Martin in the comments has said that he enjoyed it. I'd be interested to know, if he, is he going to read on? Yes, you know? and Comic Book Report has just said, I may have sold him on the book solely on how I'm describing it. So, yes, we also have Amy in the chat. Hi, Amy. Hello, Hello. long time no see. Thank have you. we mentioned the boob situation? We will bring it get... up with a yeah. Um, sure, for well, the boob situation, I assume you're su you're mentioning the mighty endowed, mm -hmm. who's Good the old first Nina villain. We... Yes, yes, Doctor Nina Dowd, an archaeologist who comes across the super cycle, which is a vehicle from Apocalypse. She touches it. Oh, sorry, New Genesis. She touches the super cycle and gets mighty powers. So she then becomes mighty. Nina Dowd or Mighty yeah. Endowed. <laughs> uh, she also has, she's also very buxom, shall we say. She's got big and boobs. Has, but we didn't that's see it. it. <laughs> they didn't, I, they didn't, I swear it was didn't. just a meme and just it, sort of, it was just taking the mick, wasn't it? And it was like. Well, yeah, she has, there's a cloud of smoke covering them and they, they don't look directly at them because they can hypnotize you and you fall under her sway. Because later on in the book, when um, I did, did you read the Secret Files issue? Yeah, she's she's escaping the DEO, the DEO, and she's using two um, agents to carry her out because she's so top heavy she can't walk on her own, <laughs> and and they realise they can't stop her because they can't look directly at her, so they knock the two people that are holding her up unconscious, so that she falls forward and she's completely useless once she's down. <laughs> I think that's. Not only is it super fun wordplay, it's actually a good design for the character, like her face is, she's really pretty. And it's just yeah. a fun concept I mean, for the first was... issue, isn't it? These teenage boys yeah. seeing their first villain and it's a sexy lady with massive boobs. Come on. <laughs> it was fun, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying I didn't like it, but it was it was just a bit of a laugh. But it was also like, you're reading it and you're going, oh, come on. Like, that's the kind of reaction I was having. Like, come on. Like, this is so, like just it's just peculiar i think that's what i want to say yeah but it was played for fun and it was played for laughs and there was no harm done you know no one complained about it no no one wrote in and got the writer cancelled for it you know it went on for 55 more issues yeah this this type of thing would not happen today this oh, this no. would not be in a book today because everyone would be offended but you know in 98 everyone saw it for what it was it was a just a I'm laugh and just had and, a laugh yeah yeah and that's exactly what it is and we moved on to issue two I'm offended by it. No, I'm because okay. you didn't see on, them. <laughs> on, on behalf of everyone else in 1988 yeah. who didn't realise what being offended meant, I'm offended for them. 
Um, uh, I think Tyler like... G. Sorry, Hyla G says you don't think you ever see her from the front standing up, just the boys' expressions, <laughs> which is, yeah, you just see that they're, they're just staring at her. Right. Like. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a nice little segue to get to the art. I mean, Absolutely. Um, again, it was great 90s art. Like I've mentioned in previous videos before, like I was really sold on the 90s stuff when we started reading it. Like I loved, it was all just clean clean lines thick outlines and cool good colors and it was much of the same in this and i I really enjoyed it like i've never heard of was it what's his name todd todd nook and is it todd nook uh yeah and um i'm i'm i, I like him i like his stuff I like his art he can I, I will look at things he's drawn again he can art for me any day <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was um, you know great, great looking book. Yeah, it's it is it's a it's um it is a little bit jarring when you go on to the um, secret files um or there's a there's an extra issue in this. Yeah, there's a few extra ones. Yeah. Yeah, and the art changes, and it is quite jarring because it is a big, drastic change. Um, Phil, should we start with your page? Yeah, sure. Um, I enjoyed the art as well. Um, I I like detail on my page and it has a lot of detail obviously with the the merchandise uh you know of, of this <laughs> young justice team this is this is roette's mother who's trying to like negotiate like you know that her daughter's front and center of the team and here's all the merchandise we want to make money do this blah 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 and it just shows you all the merchandise that you can get and it even it feels very 90s even with like the lunchbox you know? <laughs> yes and, and like the yeah. action figure it just feels like 90s and I just like the page because it felt like it's the nineties style artwork and that was really cool. And I liked it a lot. Yeah. I would yeah. honestly go back to having a lunchbox like that, taking it to work. I would love yeah. it. Instead of taking my food in some Tupperware box, just give me a cool lunchbox like that. Yeah. Put like Power Rangers on the front. They did bring them back a few years ago. I, I had a Superman one and I did bring them to work until I got laughed at and then I just I didn't it was like one time only they laughed at me and I had oh. to go away and go back to Tupperware. Oh, you laugh at me, I'm going to bring a bigger one in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Suitcase. <laughs> Scott, how about your page? Of course I'm going to pick a page with a speedster front and centre. Obviously. Um, so this, uh, for anyone listening on the podcast, this is Impulse. Uh, I can't remember which issue this was. I think it was like the third or fourth one. Um, but yeah, Impulse is running like a perimeter on a building because they're trying to find uh, harm. And it's just a really cool action pose for Impulse. Um, plus, I liked the very little thing. I don't know if you can see it just by uh, Impulse's right arm where like Robin is sitting on a chair. He's covered the Batman symbol with a little Robin mm. symbol. And I thought that was a, a really fun little uh, little thing oh, yeah. for him to do. Uh, but yeah, I like I picked this for Impulse. He looks awesome. And, he does. Yeah. That's why he's my favourite speed star. I just I like the design of him. I love yeah. the wavy hair and the goggles. I just think he looks so much fun. He's very irritating, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> he is. But th that's part of his character. I mean, he's from the future where you know they live their life on computers and they don't have responsibility or anything like that. So he doesn't understand danger and consequences. Yeah, he's a bit. He's a little bit more interesting, I think, than just a color swapped Flash or someone else just being Flash. He is his own yeah. character with his own backstory. Um, my page, I picked the first page of issue three, um, four. This is Arrowette showing up for the first time. I picked this because not only is it a gorgeous image of Arrowette, like the art is fantastic. Yeah, it looks great. But it's where the book turns. It goes you finally realize that this is not just going to be a fun, silly children's book. This, there's grown up consequences occurring now. You know, she's got an arrow through her shoulder. There's blood. She's beaten. She's about to be bested. You know, she's scared. It's the book just elevated right here from the first three issues, which were super fun. You were getting to know the characters. And now we're getting to know their first arching bad guy who is harm. You know, he, he, He's in issue four and he's then again in issue six and they have to deal with him. And it's just, I think it's a gorgeous page. And I do like when an artist goes outside the lines, you know, her bow and her 
yeah arrows are outside the line they're on outside the white the border, border. Yeah, yeah yeah i just i just think like if you're going to do that just do the whole page but it just pops it does and it, it makes it look brilliant yeah and i really like the design for arrowette um she's not just a green arrow clone you know she's got her own kind of style this is her second costume she looks more like her mother in her original costume it's like a white frilly dress and a big right. gold <laughs> mask like the mother but yes um she, on that page, it, it, it looks very sorry it looks very different to the rest of the book but i'm assuming it's the same artist it's almost as if he spent more time on that one image than the rest because it. it's a whole page image maybe yeah. it's larger so i like it a lot yeah had, he, like, yeah, it's cool. Get less room for error on a whole page spread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Highland G's page. He picked this is from issue seven. It's Nightwing breaking up others as they're um, fighting over the kids. Um, and he did give an explanation. He said um, his page pick is Nightwing breaking up the fight between the two mums. It's just a really fun moment and kind of sums up the pure ridiculousness of this book. Because in issue seven, issue seven begins with Arrowette's mother slamming uh, Wonder Girl's mother's face into a cake, and they're fighting over their daughters. <laughs> and then, um, as they're fighting, Nightwing just c comes walking out, holding them, and they just they obey him. He's got the same sort of presence as Batman, hasn't he? He's got that. Yeah. He's got that air of authority that people just respect and listen to, which is nice. Um, you do have another page, Scott, if I'm not mistaken. I do, yeah. It was just a little bonus page for myself. You can pop it up if you want. Uh, it's um, This was my favourite character design. This was Rip Raw, and this was like the halfway through issue two or something. And again, for me, it was like the thick the thick lines. The colours look great. It's so much like definition like in the muscles and um, in his hair. It's, I love the colour of his hair, the different shades there. And I just loved it. And I honestly, I spent quite a while just looking at this character and I was like, that is drawn and coloured brilliantly. And I just wanted to give a little nod during the show. Yeah, he kind of looks like Killabrack from um, Apocalypse. Dark side. I don't know who that is. Uh, High Father's son. Oh, oh of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, well, he's he from has... New... Go ahead. I was just going to say, he is from New Genesis, so that would explain why he looks like Killabrack. He has really big calf muscles and really skinny ankles. <laughs> Oh, on his left leg there, you know, just <laughs> really, really skinny ankles. But that's that's well, the whole thing I noticed about it. <laughs> he's not been able to get to the gym for a thousand years. He's been buried under a temple. If he hasn't been to the gym, he, he doesn't look, look like me. He's never been to the gym either, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did have some good character designs. Um, mm -hmm. The the matador girl that they fought in. Mexico. Toro. 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 Yeah, she looked really yeah. good as well. Like the design of her. She Not, was very. Um, yeah. So, so this is a little side note I wanted to get to as well, but I might as well get to it now while we're there. Um, the little, I don't know, the the writer notes, the narration or something. I don't know what it was, but it was so much like fourth wall breaking stuff. And it was like, you know, this is Toro. Um, just be happy with this name. Otherwise, it could have been Lotta Bull. You know what I mean? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh come on! Like, I, it was it was that stuff that kind of took me out of the of the book now and again. Um, just him, just them, like, I don't know, making little sarcastic remarks here and there. Because another one was like, um, yes, the last issue was Halloween, but don't give us slack for it uh, <laughs> and things like that. And I'm like, I wasn't going to, but what? Why have you said this? Like. <laughs> Like, it's almost like they feel guilty that they have to justify certain things themselves, yeah. you know. I think he's just joking. I think it's just a way of adding a little extra humor to the book, you know. Yeah, just, but I just thought I, maybe get the characters to do it. Don't just like as the writer, don't just write it in. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, it, it just put me off. That's all. It just took me out a little bit. That's fair. Um, Chris is in from Off My Shelves. Hi, Chris. I think he likes your character design. He says, big old hands, all the better to shoot with, I suppose. No, so I think that was Arrowette, big... I think. Oh, was Arrowette. Arrowette. Oh, Arrowette. Oh, does she have big hands? <laughs> Did she have big hands in the image? <laughs> Shouldn't be looking at the hands. <laughs> so we've done the art. Um, I think we can agree, at, at least mostly, it's it's decent art. But the writing, what did you think? We'll start with Phil this time. 
I don't I, I don't know what the story is. I, I get that they have a monster or a, a villainy tissue and they're it's all about team bonding and the, for the main heroes to trust them to do it, whatever. I just don't really get the purpose of this as a, as a volume. I understand you're saying it's better through as the run goes on, so maybe they're kind of, you know, obviously laying the foundations, building the team, and you'll see more of that later on. But I just feel like Harm, for example, if he had been like a villain from the start to the end, and maybe dipped in here and then, you know, just had one villain to kind of best them, and then he had to get, they had overcome that. I just felt that would be far better. I don't really understand what the overall story was trying to do, other than just introduce you to to the to the characters. And I think that was well, it. yeah. Because the thing is, again, I'm going to go back to the '90s. They weren't writing comic books to sell a trade, you know, or to mm -hmm. sell a Netflix show. They were writing comic books monthly. So yeah. they would tell a story over as many issues as they wanted, or, you know, they would just keep it going. Their, their goal was never to go, right, we need to do four issue stories so that we can do X amount of trades. It's just tell a story. And issue seven, at the end of the camp, you know, where Cassie and Sissy are in the tent and the mothers have agreed that they'll let them be on the team, that uh, feels like a natural conclusion to the team building arc so that's why it was put in a trade nowadays i understand what you're saying harm would have been in issue one he would have been in issue two issue three issue mm. four and then that would have been a trade because that's how comic books are written now they're written for trades they're not written for monthlies anymore unfortunately because yeah. you'll not find that with the next volume it will probably be five or six issues it won't be a constant amount of issues every volume like even even with harm like Again, they could have kept him on for a storyline down the line, but his dad killed him. His dad shot him. I'm assuming he. Oh, so, okay. Here we go. Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah. So it just Shane seems just, like just zipped his lips. Okay. Yeah. So I just think like they, I don't know. They could have made him stronger in this as well, um, just to have like an overall villain. But obviously, what you're saying now is that maybe they have. For down the line, I'm you know, not saying anything. You're not re you're not reading on, so I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But I will say, read on if you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed any of the characters in this book, well, even ones that you might not think you'll see again, maybe read on because you might. Martin definitely said he wanted a read on, so awesome. Be kind. Yeah. <laughs> Story wise, for me, but yes, I think... go on, Scott. Um, well, I've said it, haven't I, at the very start. This is Monster of the Week, and we, but we are getting introduced to the to the characters, and that is is what I think this these seven issues are about. Um, it was great for me, you know. I didn't know a thing, pretty much, about any of these characters, and you know, I got to got to learn a bit about them, how they work together, the little nuances, um, and uh, I haven't really read that much about Impulse. So, as a Speedster fan. Uh, that's one aspect I enjoyed and I was looking forward to it when I knew this book was coming up uh, so yeah uh, you know, it was just fun watching them get to know each other um, I, I did quite enjoy the truth or dare bit at the end in issue 7 it was quite it was quite nice and it was quite a clever way for kids, teenagers to have their development you know, together just camping, truth or dare having a laugh having a bit of a serious moment. And it, you know, you could tell what was going on, and it was good. Um, go on. C can somebody remind me, because I forget, what was Superboy's uh, superpowers? Because he mentioned like a million times. <laughs> Tactile telekinesis. It it's just, that, that was irritating, <laughs> to be honest. That, I know. that was oh, great. What, what it was a great was way it? of... <laughs> it was a great way, because like you say, if you haven't read a Superboy book, you might just think he's Superman. You know, you might just think he's got laser eyes and x-ray vision mm -hmm. and ice breath and he doesn't have any of those things at this point in time all he has is his tactile telekinesis which he can use to make himself fly he can use to make himself strong and he can use to make himself invulnerable that's it well he can also touch things and deconstruct them but it, that's it he has tele he essentially has telekinesis that he uses to mimic superman's powers yeah 
I really like the part where he was practicing with Arrowette to try and catch the yeah. arrow with one hand, and he couldn't do it. Like no matter how many arrows she fired, but then of course it's whenever Robin sussed out what the problem was, he just steps in and grabs both of them. I was like, "Yep, that's that's cool. I like that part to be honest." But yeah. Um, Superboy was irritating. Impulse was irritating, and I do like Robin. I'm assuming it's Tim Drake. Tim Drake, yes. Yeah, and I quite like Tim Drake. To be fair, it never yeah, mentioned my favorite Robin. Yeah, it never mentioned it was Tim Drake. Sure, it didn't. No, no, he hasn't told them his secret identity. They don't even know who he is. I like the part with the mask that they say Scott mentioned the truth for there. <laughs> takes the mask off and he has another mask. So he anticipates it's going to happen. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's really clever. Um, Highland G makes a good point. He says he really likes that each issue stands alone but yeah it's also connected to the main team progression means you don't feel the need to finish the trade in one sitting yeah that's yeah that's something you don't get from trades now is it i mean like when we were reading skyfall like uh, Sky skyward. skyward you just had to read the next issue because it did not no issue felt like the end issue it felt like i need yeah. to turn the page to see what's happening i need to turn the page to see what's happening there was no way you could just put a bookmark and mm. move on Whereas with this, you know, at the end of every issue, put the bookmark in and come back to it. And that's a great way. That's what I've always said with my comics. I want a start, a middle and an end. I don't ask for much. I'll, le I'll let you off with a bad story if you give me a start, a middle and an end. You know, like we've had with like, you know, some books we've read have been not great, but it's been a whole trade. And I've appreciated that and scored it accordingly. But when mm. you just end, I get annoyed. And I felt like this, this this felt like an ending to that. You know, they've defeated the bad guy. They've made their team. The grown up said they can have their team, their friends at the end, and then it's finished. And then it can continue. You can if you want, but you you don't feel like you're going to miss anything and you don't feel like you're waiting for anything. I, well, to be honest, I feel like I'm waiting for, and Scott mentioned earlier on, I'm waiting for an explanation to this super cycle thing. The super cycle. The super yeah, cycle, like... yes. That's from it's a it's a vehicle from New Genesis. No, I, I um, get it, but it's just like it, it's been buried for what thousands of years, and they're digging that up, and then they just use it. But it's almost able to tell where there's trouble. Yes, like it's there's gonna be more to it. There's gonna be something more to it, surely. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's it's, it's, a, it's a filling and waiting. I'm I'm, I'm guessing. I, I did find it incredibly cheesy when we had the scene of Rip Roar and robin calling the bike as if it was a dog being like here boy come like who's your favorite come to me no come to me like and all that it's a little bit cheesy but yeah i'm, I'm willing to to waver it because it's the 90s it's like korg westland for the goats and love and thunder <laughs> yeah yeah but worse <laughs> <laughs> um tell us tell me and everyone else who was your favourite character out of the Young Justice team? Who are you asking? You both of you. Shane, oh. you go first. I'll go first. My favourite character is Wonder Girl. Um, having read, obviously, Wonder Woman and her first appearance in that and her yeah. getting her powers, because she started off with no powers. She used to use um, some of Wonder Woman's equipment. She used to mm -hmm. use the sandals of Hermes to fly and the gauntlet of Atlas for her strength. And then she met Zeus and asked him for some powers and he gave her some powers. So now she has her own powers. And I think... Can I do that? And <laughs> if you meet Zeus, ah, you have to cool. get to Olympus first. Right. <laughs> I'll Google Maps it now. And I just love her design as well. The black wig, yeah. the goggles, the leather jacket. Like It's heavily inspired by Superboy, but she looks very cool. 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 <laughs> cool. cool. <laughs> uh, Batman. Batman. <laughs> I said out of the Young Justice guys. Come on. Well, Batman was in this book. No, Young um, Justice. <laughs> man, they're, so, they're all irritated. It'd be Robin, to be fair. Um, Wonder Girl, I liked her. She was cool. There was a, a, a scene where I think it was her mum had mentioned that like, why not wear the costume for Donna Troy or Donna Giver? I'm assuming it's Donna Troy. And I was expecting this kind of like, like splash page of her wearing like a Wonder Woman style kind of costume. I was hoping for that, and that didn't come. Uh, she was cool. I liked her, but uh, Robin, just because he was Batman esque, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> the closest to Batman you're allowed yeah. to choose, pretty yes. much. For me, it was Superboy. Uh, you know, he was he was a bit cocky, uh, a bit cheeky, and I don't know, I, I, just something was was I was drawn to him. He was a cool guy, 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Should boy. Highland G has picked Arrowette. He says Arrowette is my favourite. She was so much. She has so much baggage to try and break free of, but still fun. Yeah. Um, Martin agrees with Phil. Robin's his favourite so far. Um, I really like that scene with Wonder Woman asking Wonder Girl why she wasn't wearing the costume and her just, you know, just showing her insecurity. She's like, I'm not worthy of it yet. I'm not, I'm building up to it. I don't Mm -hmm. want to damage it. I don't want to get it dirty. You know, I thought that was just really quite insightful into her character. Yeah. And it was sweet as well. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, she's not dismissive of it. She doesn't, she's not saying, well, I want to be my own Wonder Girl. You know, I don't want to be thought of as that Wonder Girl. I'm yeah. the new Wonder Girl. She was like, no, I'm not worthy yet. When I'm worthy, I'll wear it. And I thought that was really nice. You know, and, and that's something cool to set up this early on in the story as well. Because, you know, if you're going to keep reading, that is going to be one of the loose ends you were hoping that gets tied up. You know, will she eventually become ready or will she go through something that will go, you know what, I need this suit um so yeah uh it was it was good to have that in and i'm looking forward maybe if i read on uh to seeing (laughs) so is arrowette is she is it like what relation to green arrow is she like is she uh, so she's just like explain her explain her for me please (laughs) like Uh, her mother's an olympic archer who taught her daughter how to fight and fire arrows and so she's now the superhero in the family. So I think she... at one point the mother tried to be a superhero or was a superhero for a little while. Yeah, that was mentioned. Mm. Yeah. But um, there's no relation to Green Arrow. She's not like Artemis or Not Red even like a, fa- like a fan. Like, oh, he's my favourite hero. I'll become an archer. There's just nothing. It's just, okay. No, I think she's just a really good archer herself. So, <laughs> I mean, they... When I said earlier on about them making the cartoon of this, they... They took the cartoon premise of a teenage team and the name Young Justice, and then they they reworked it and changed it as much as possible because none of the characters line up, none of the characters act like anything in this book. The only character that's correct in the TV show is Superboy. They've got the wrong right. Robin, the wrong Flash, like the wrong Impulse. They've got the wrong Arrowette. They've like everyone is wrong. Every character is completely oh, wrong. <laughs> Are you upset by that? I was incredibly upset by that. I was expecting like this TV show, <laughs> you wanted that. and I didn't. Yeah, I wanted this, and I didn't yeah. get it. That sucks. I mean, yeah, it's it's just such a good run. Like from one to fifty-five, though, you get new members joining the team. You know, some obviously things happen to existing members, but it just it just expands into such a great great world on its own. And I mean, I'm going to read on again because I've got the bug now. I have to, uh, I keep I have to read, yeah. So, but, uh, your name is the the OG Super Sons, and the Super Sons is in John Kent and Damian Wayne is something I want to read at some point. What? Why are you linking that to this? Like, because now, now I'm worried for that. You know, <laughs> this is going to be like that. Well, I mean, this mm. is the original Superboy Robin and flash like the young versions of them so it's the original the og super sons like if this were out today it'd be those three in the super sons book wouldn't it okay well please tell me super sons like the super sons you know i, I, I you know is better i mean well S- well super sons is a 2022 version of this so i hope okay. that helps <laughs> cool. just imagine yeah. everything you're not allowed to do today in a comic book oh cool okay. so it's all cool. the fun has been stripped cool. out and it's just, just, just. No, I'm joking. Super Sons is a great book. It's so, it's so much fun. It's, it, yeah, it's the, it's the updated version of this, really, just without the team. It's just Superboy and Robin, and it's great. Hmm. But Goodness. this is my Robin, and this is my Superboy, and I will not acknowledge John Ken and Damian Wayne any further. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, Highland G raised a pretty cool point earlier about Red Tornado. The fact that yes. it was it was a good choice of character to um, kind of add, uh, he said, yeah, add a bit of seriousness against the kid's silliness. Um, <laughs> otherwise, and I totally agree with him, otherwise it would have been too much. Oh. That's what he said. Yes, I clicked on the wrong comment. Oh. There it is. Oh, you... <laughs> Otherwise it may be yes. too much, that's what he said. So, yeah, I totally agree. There needed to be that kind of maturity or just like a palate cleanser 
in this story. That's how I kind of took it. Um, just to kind of go right, just to reset you a bit, recalibrate you, and then get back into some silliness, but with with the characters. It really and it's nice that he wasn't relegated to the headquarters. He also had his little, you know, side mission when he went to see his yeah. daughter. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, I assume you don't know much about Red Tornado. Not a thing. <laughs> See, this, this is one of the, my bigger issues I have, and it's maybe it's, it's my comic book snobbery or, or elitism. It's like, Rick, like Red Tornado, Superboy, Impulse, Arrowette. You know, who like who are these people? Like, you know, I know nothing about any of them. Like, I, I, I get that obviously some are related to Dale or Hero, or not related, like, family, but, like, they're characters are related somehow they are characters but i just i have no affiliation of no interest in checking any of these characters out and red tornado was he was a, a good addition 100 percent. but like who on earth who is he he's a he justice from? league member <laughs> is, it, is he is he human you know he's not also human he's just, where's he from you know he was human oh, okay now he's That's what is it said uh, down a book i, I think my interest wavered in and out throughout reading this nice. just because I was so disinterested in a lot of these characters. That was hard to absorb every detail. So did you go into this straight like or did you just go into this book with that kind of mentality? No. I wasn't no. excited because I, I said before, if somebody talks passionately about a book and Shane does with Young Justice and um even last week, after last week's show, uh, me, Shane, and Martin were behind talking about Supergirl. And I, like I said, think, like, I want to read Supergirl. So I, I had not high expectations, but just like a level of expectation that I would really enjoy this. And it just, like, that, that balloon burst fairly quickly for me, uh, sadly. <laughs> and that's, that's where I, I'm at with it. Like, I was excited to read it. It just yeah. didn't grip me. So... Really. What what burst the bubble? If I'm being, I, I don't have a, an explanation. Um, the first issue <laughs> burst the bubble. To be honest, the first <laughs> few <laughs> pages, I just, I, I, I just didn't like we talked about before in, in weeks previous about the hook. Like you mentioned, like volume one was the hook mm. and volume two, whatever. For this, there was just no hook. It just, I just felt so disinterested that reading this was a bit. Of, no, I don't want to say it's a chore. It's not fair. But like, if this is my own book and I wasn't reading for the nerd herd, I would have read a few issues, put it down, and forgot about it. Would have been a DNF for me. I did not finish. If I had owned oh. this, I would have not finished it. But because I am a professional uh, <laughs> book reviewer, I, uh, I I I continued on. So yeah. soldiered on for me. Soldiered Thank on. you. I appreciate exactly. that. You're so brave. So brave. <laughs> so brave. It's 2022. Of course, I am brave. <laughs> okay well i mean it's i i understand like i say i'm I, not every book is for everyone 100 percent, i understand and reading from different time periods as mm. everyone has i completely get it some people are going to like it some people are not i'm a grown-up i accept <laughs> other people's opinions everyone is valid and everyone is entitled to it unless they score kingdom come lower than you <laughs> Want yeah, get out. We're not too. Yeah, yeah. We we still don't agree on that. Phil. It's not just it's that's not just me on that one. <laughs> did you did you anticipate this reaction from Phil and me? Um, I did. I I feared it because I like I I was obviously talking to my friend and I was like they they haven't really read past like like previous to twenty ten books. So are they going to understand that this is it? it it's not a message book you know it's not for a netflix show it's not to get anything out of it other than the reader's enjoyment whereas shows books today they're but they are what they are today they're, they're but they're forgettable today mm -hmm. how many times do you go back and reread a trade from today um anything from the past five ten years they're one and dones whereas this has been not only one of my favorites for the past 20 years it's been one of my regular reads for 20 years you know this so this stuck with me and no not many books today do that unfortunately mm. like i enjoy reading you know 
things like Once and Future and Lock and Key. But for me, I'm not going to go back and read them again and again. But I yeah. really, really enjoyed reading them. You know, like Skywood, I would, I'm not going to read again. Um, but there are some things that just stick with you. And for me, this is one of them. I absolutely adore everything this book has to offer, from characters to writing to art. Did you did you feel this way after your first read? And what I mean by that is, like, I think Highland G mentioned, I don't know if it was in the chat tonight or in, on Instagram earlier on today, about the first time he read it, he found it quite annoying, I think, but at a certain point in the story, he obviously appreciated it more and must have reread it, whatever. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Have you found this appreciation for it? just through rereading it or is it just like as you read it this is excellent this is my book i'm always oh yeah no i i fell in love with the character straight away um i just absolutely loved them i just wanted to read more i followed them on through this um at the end of this run they move on to teen titans i followed them through teen titans they moved on to titans and justice league like i followed the characters as far as they went until flash ruined everything with flashpoint (laughs) Why do I feel responsible? Like, why, do I, why do I feel like that was aimed at me? Um, Martin raised a really, really good point, and I totally agree with it. Um, the hook in this book was when the girls were introduced. Uh, that's when it went to a team book. I totally agree. Like, reading the first three issues with just the boys, um, yeah, it, it, it didn't feel complete. It kind of felt like, you know, oh, it's just the lads messing around, you know? And then... Um, yeah, and like Highland G says, the when the girls came in, their humour was levelled out. Like it was the whole the whole tone was just yeah a bit more mellow and a bit more mature in my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's when it really started um, to become a bit more enjoyable. And yeah, so I totally agree with them there. I agree with yeah. that too. That the humour does kind of shift a bit more to, to into the like the teen dynamic, but I did dislike the kind of like childish like oh he likes her more than me drama yeah, with kids man i yeah. know but like just it's just like i just oh come on get over it like do you know what i mean like she was like you know they're kids it's like the biggest thing in the world when someone fancies you or doesn't fancy you yeah everyone's always fancy me i don't oh, that's like you know it's just, yeah it's just uh, sorry <laughs> i just thought that was a bit not childish but like a different type of childishness that kind of stuff, but I get it. I, I get it. I mean, and this is the problem. Like I say, I need to remember that they, they, they're kids in this book, and this maybe this book is for kids at the, at that time. But yeah, not for thirty six year old men like myself. I also don't think it's for kids. Kids. I mean, harm. You know, attacks Arrowette, shoots her with an arrow, and then like you know, threatens his murdered. parents, and then he gets murdered by his dad. By so dad, yeah. like, yeah, shot through the door bleeds out in front of his dad i don't so it's not really a kid's book but yeah and young on adult. That as well i need to mention i can't be young adult but i get what you're saying but I, I do have to mention the part where like the dad was shooting his son and he was more worried about getting blood on the carpet or something was like, yeah oh your mother's gonna kill me and I'm like... <laughs> there's blood on the linoleum yeah. <laughs> well he'd had it with the son the son was just you know he was a super they were, fri- was... they were fright they were frightened of him that's what it came down yeah. to, I suppose. But uh, that, that's what I'm saying. His death, or seem, seemingly his death, uh, I wish it hadn't happened. I wanted him to create more havoc. So it's good to know that, that he may do somewhere down the line. Which I'll never read, so I'll just ask you. I'll offer. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you all the spoilers off air for this 24-year-old series. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's about that time we should get into final thoughts and scores if you're ready yeah, um, totally. if anyone has read along in the chat please drop your scores in and we will add them to ours as always phil do you want to start us off i hadn't written a score down and i hadn't had anything in my mind what i wanted it to be i was waiting to see how this chat went and to be fair i think i've scored it higher than i may have done had i written a score down just because like you've helped me remember some points that were actually quite good um, and were quite funny. I think the humour at times is a bit too much, a bit too childish. And obviously we mentioned when the girls came into the team, it improved. Um, I don't know any of the characters, really. I, I, you know, even when I were doing your quiz, Shane, if we were going to play that alphabet 
round. I've got these written down to use, but it's like I'm not gonna remember them if I hand. They're just forgettable for me. Uh, art was great. I enjoyed it a lot. It did seem it, it actually seemed nineties, but fear and into the noughties as well. It wasn't like the, the early nineties stuff that we've all we've read before on the nerd herd. Uh, I could, I'm not gonna read on. It's a book that people like and appreciate. And I like that you have a reading copy and the original <laughs> and whatever else. But I have actually, I'm going to give it a six because uh, I think a five is maybe a bit unfair because it's not a five book. I, I'm going to give it a six. I'm going to stick with it. You have talked you, you, talk me up. You have talked me up. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Scott? Yeah, I think similar similar to what Phil said in terms of uh, talking about it has made me go, oh, you know what? It wasn't as bad as I originally came <laughs> came out, you know. I I I came onto the show. Um, I told Amy like, look, my score is between this and this. I don't know. Like, I'm a bit like I'm on the fence with this book, but it was because I hadn't read anything like this. I didn't know how what angle to come at it. Do I look at it from a modern point of view, or do I look at it from how it came out and the kind of um, comics that people expected back then and stuff like that so i was really quite um perplexed um the art was stunning um but i didn't have a bad time i wasn't like uh you know oh, i gotta read the next one gotta read the next one um i was i was just pressed for time this week that's why i it was i was struggling but it was just it was just a decent fun um Sorry, this offends you. Uh, to me, this is a bit of like a throwaway story because it wasn't an arc. But that's what I know because I've only been reading for a few years. So it's it's tough. Um, so I am sorry. But um, but you've wiggled me up. Huh? Hmm. Um, <laughs> also for me, also for me, it's also a six. It was going to be a five. Mm. Oh, wow. So six for me as well. So thank you. Wow. No, thank you. That's higher than I thought both of you were going to score. <laughs> um, we've got a couple in the chat. But I will give my thoughts while they're coming in. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, last week I said the book was like boiled rice. Um, for me, this is like my favourite meal, like all on the same plate, like everything. Everything I love on the same plate. There's like lasagna and there's steak and there's chips. and like It's all on the plate. Um, I love the writer. Peter David is one of my favourites, hands down. If I see his name on a book, I'm, I, I don't even have to have my arm twisted to read it. The art is gorgeous. I tried to follow him and try to grab as much of his um, art as I can. When he's on another book, I'll see what covers he does because I might want to like grab them. Uh, I, I just love it. The characters, everything. Like I say, I followed them for 15 years from teenagers up to Teen Titans, right up to Flashpoint. And then I even followed them into New 52 when they were all completely rewritten into different characters and I dropped off. But I love them and I love this book. And I know it's not a perfect book. Um, even reading it now, I can understand both your points of view. It makes perfect sense. And I know what's to come. So like I say, scoring this was really hard because I know where the whole story ends and I had to drag it back to these seven issues. But I absolutely love this and I'm going to reread it probably until the day I die, do you know what I mean? Like, oh. it's going to be one of my yearly reads until I'm dead. I want to be buried with this book. So, <laughs> so this is going to I be like an A down. from me. An yeah, a. make sure. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we've got three scores from the audience. Uh, Highland G, I give this a solid seven. It's a good start to a book that gets so much better as it goes on. Keep that in mind. Agreed. Um, Pete, Scoring this from reading it on its release, it's a solid eight. Love the humor and love the characters. Plus, great art. Thank you very much. Nice. And Martin, this was a fun 90s book that was cheese in places, but didn't stop me enjoying it. I will continue on between other reads. Got to give this a seven. So we got nice. a seven, an eight, and a seven, which gives you guys an average of 7.3. Adding that uh, to Phil's six, Shane's eight, and my six... Uh, that brings us to a total of 6.8. So, 
everyone is a regular by now. You do, you you know we're going <laughs> to hit the top ten. But we'll show you no. anyway for anyone who is new. There it is. That's our top ten. I I like looking at the top ten, but yeah, I will show you now where it comes on the other leaderboard. So six point eight. We now have four books in joint sixteenth place with Black Widow's Shield Most Wanted, Critical Role, Vox Machina Origins Volume One, and Monstrous Volume Two. So it's joint with them. Okay, I'm happy. I've got to disagree with the monstrous thing. It doesn't. It's not on par with monstrous for me, to be honest. Well, I mean, I disagree with up in the sky, but sure, (laughs) and all the winners. I still disagree with the placement of uh, Kingdom Come, but yeah, yeah. what do I know? (laughs) Can't wait for the end of the year show. That's going to be. It's going to be mental. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So yes, um, should we tell everyone what we're reading next week? Yes, it's my pick. Looking forward to it. Roll VT. Am I clicking it? Or are you clicking it? Go, go, go! Roll the VT. What are we reading next week, Scott? We are reading Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Volume 1. Like Martin has said, let's go. It's going to be yes. great. It's going to be Can awesome. Can we upload the intro music to Power Rangers and have it playing on a constant loop in the background oh, while yeah. we talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. Connie likes that pick as well. Hell yes, you're about to see my awesome. Power Ranger Kid Unleashed. <laughs> Been looking well. for an excuse to read the comics. Awesome. There we go. Well, there's a lot of comics to read, but uh, for everyone who's enjoying it, who's looking forward to this next week, make sure to share it, and uh, we'll have a really good time next week. Yes, and I might even do the whole thing in my Power Ranger helmet. <laughs> and just... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I may bring my morphers and display all my morphers next nice. week, and my action figures, so I'll change this whole display up just for you, Scott. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm very pleased. Yes, I'm really looking forward to that. So, yes. Thank you all for joining us while we talked about one of my favourite books this week, Young Justice League of Their Own. Until next week, there's nothing left to do but get your waves out. Bye. And say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs>